chapter 2 the world population so these three terms distribution density and growth it is very essential to understand them by distribution we mean the way people are spread on earth people generally form communities and societies right so it is very essential to understand that pattern if you are to serve them better now you must be thinking why Amit why is it necessary to understand the distribution of people how is it going to help us well think of it this way there are so many variables associated with humans like social economics political biological genetics geographical etc they all are interlinked with human it's like we are at the center of all of this and if we study distribution of people then we will be able to serve them well we can serve them with better health planning educational planning employment planning housing planning food supply etc coming to the second term density by density we mean how many people are packed in a specific amount of space and again it is important to know this because if we know how many people are squeezed in a set amount of place we can control the population from causing environmental pollution if a place is packed with people and people have needs in fulfilling those needs there will be pollution right so think of it that way and the third term is growth since population is related to economic development therefore keeping a track of its growth is very important in tackling social political and economic issues so this chapter is all about all the things that we just heard so the first topic of this chapter is patterns of population distribution in the world now patterns of population distribution and density helps us to understand the demographic characteristics of any area when we say demographic characteristics we mean the age gender education profession occupation income level and marital status of the people knowing all of this is very important because it will give meaningful and actionable insights when implementing the government policies and schemes towards development of nation I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say. There are many public policies that require these insights so that it improves the lives of the citizens which in turn helps in developing the economy. So here are the 10 most populous countries of the world. Just remember the top 3 countries that is India, China and United States. And the next topic is density of population. I want you to watch this short clip taken from one of my previous videos. This clip is going to sum up the entire meaning of population density. Population density is always expressed in per square kilometer or kilometer square. Both are same. Consider a distance between A to B as 1 kilometer. The total number of people staying in this 1 kilometer piece of land is called as population density. Now the next question that comes in your mind is how do we calculate the density of population? The most common way is to divide the total population of an area by the total land area. Population count is collected from census and land area is collected from local municipality and then you can divide both of them to get the population density. I hope it was pretty clear and apologies for the change in voice modulation. It was a clip from an old video. Anyways, some of the densely populated parts of the world are Northeastern part of USA. I'm talking about this region over here comprising of states like Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Maryland, Vermont, then mid-Atlantic states of New Jersey, New York and Pennsylvania. All these places are densely populated regions of US. And then going to the northwestern part of Europe, that is countries like Ireland, the United Kingdom, Belgium, the Netherlands, North Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Luxembourg, Northern France, Southern Germany and Switzerland. These all are densely populated places of Europe. Coming to the Asian continent, that is South, Southeast and East Asia, this entire region over here, if you just take India and China, I think these two countries' population is enough to state the point that this region of Asia is densely populated. Just keep these regions in mind. It's good to remember from examination point of view, but also if at any point you visit any of these places, you now know where to hang out and meet people. Now there are some places where population density is absolutely low. These places are the North and South Poles extremely cold areas i mean civilization does exist over here but it's very low there are many international research stations that exist in antarctica so mostly people are there to do scientific research of climate change and environmental stuff 
Some 30 countries have their research stations there. In fact, India has one as well by the name of Indian Antarctic Program. If you're interested to read further, link to that is in the description. In the North Pole, there is the city called Svalbard in Norway. It is one of the world's northernmost inhabited areas. The area of this place is 61,022 square kilometer and the population is 2,642. I just want you to have an idea as to how low is the population density in the North Pole. And by the way, this place has a university. Hence, people are serious about staying here forever. You can read more. Link is in the description. Apart from North and South Pole, we have some places in the equator, middle of the Earth, where the conditions are so harsh that density of population is low in these regions. We are talking about central parts of Africa where it's super hot and then places like Amazon forest in South America, Andaman and Nicobar Island in India. So much of wilderness and natural vegetation exist, basically forest, very less people stay here. Just keep these places in mind with regards to population density. Moving on to the next topic, factors influencing the distribution of population. There are some reasons behind population distribution. They are usually related to geographical, economic and socio-cultural factors. Let's quickly begin with geographical factors. These are something we human have no control over it whatsoever, like the availability of water. Water is used for almost everything and by everyone such as drinking, bathing, cooking, growing crops, industrial and navigational purposes. And that's why you will notice that river valleys are among the most densely populated areas of the world. The next one is landform. When we say landforms, we are talking about the physical features of earth like mountains, plateaus, plains, deserts, etc. People prefer living on flat plains and gentle slopes. That's why you will see most of the populated cities in India are on the banks of river Ganga. If you look at the regions of northeast and north, I'm talking about places lying at foothill of Himalayas, there you will find less people because these places will not favor agricultural and industrial development. Hence, there will be less employment and people will not prefer staying at a place where it is hard to earn a living. And the third one is climate. I want you to just think about this. When choosing a location for your vacation, you would prefer a place with pleasant weather, right? Hence, people don't prefer staying at areas with very heavy rainfall or extreme and harsh climates. One good example is the Mediterranean region. So the countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea are some of the biggest holiday destination of the world. Countries like Greece, Italy, Spain, all such exotic locations are located in temperate region with pleasant climate. So I hope you understand how much climate plays an important role in population distribution. And the last one under geographical factor is soils. Soil is usually related with agricultural and allied activities. By allied activities, we are talking about animal husbandry, horticulture, sericulture, fisheries, agroforestry, etc. All these activities require fertile soil for best productivity. And many people rely on these activities for the living. Understand the connection. Therefore, soil directly comes as an important factor for population distribution. Now coming to the second factor, economic factors. Whenever economic word comes, we are directly referring to businesses, profit, loss, wages, income and all these kind of things. So the first one under this is minerals. Areas with mineral deposits attract industries. This is so true. Take a look around all the iron and steel industries in India. You will find majority of them in the regions of Peninsula Plateau or Chota Nagpur Plateau and these regions are usually rich in iron ores. Mining and industrial activities generate employment, so skilled and semi-skilled workers move to these areas and make them densely populated. So if you check out the regions of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, Orissa, Jharkhand, all these places are densely populated. The second one is urbanization. The meaning of urbanization is a population shift from rural to urban area. Cities offer better employment opportunities, educational, medical facilities, better transportation and communication and that is what draws people to cities. It leads to rural to urban migration and cities grow in size. Mega cities of the world continue to attract large number of migrants every year. This is absolutely true. And the last point under economic factor is industrialization. So industrialization is the process in which a society or a country 
transforms itself from a primarily agricultural society into manufacturing of goods and services. Industries gives a lot of job opportunities and attracts a lot of people. We are not just talking about people who work in the factories, but also people who provide facilities to a civilization like shopkeepers, banks, teachers, doctors and other services. Because when people start living in a particular place, that place soon grows into a society, and then a town, then a city. So you would need many other services to keep that little city going. I hope you are understanding the connection. Now going to the third and the last factor affecting population distribution of a place is social and cultural factors. Some places attract more people because they have religious or cultural significance. I'll give you two places in India as an example. The first one is Varanasi, often known as land of spirituality. People visit this city for visiting temples or take a holy dip in the river Ganga. It's the spiritual and the cultural connection that makes people visit Varanasi. Now the second place is Goa. This city thrives on culture that resonates among young couples and people who love socializing and do adventure sports. So you see it's the social and cultural factor that attracts people to a particular place. Now the next topic is population growth. In simple terms it means whether the population of a place has increased or decreased over a period of time. Now this change can be positive as well as negative. Let's first understand what are the components of population change. There are three major components of population change and they are births, deaths and migration. Now we all know the meaning of births and deaths. The number of newborn babies are the births, that is population increases. And the people dying every year are the deaths, that is population decreases. Apart from births and deaths, there is another way by which the population size changes. When people move from one place to another, it's called migration. The place they move from is called the place of origin and the place they move to is called the place of destination. Now let's see how to find the natural growth of population. This is the population increased by difference between births and deaths in a particular region between two points of time. So natural growth is equal to births minus deaths. Suppose this is a region. Here green indicate births and red indicates deaths. For the sake of an example, we will keep the dots limited. In between you have the regular population who are working, studying and doing all sorts of things. Let's say in 2006, this is how the pattern looks like. In 2015, it was something like this. You see a difference, right? So when you calculate natural growth for each year, that is births minus deaths, you will see the difference in the natural growth of population. Now on the other hand, to find the actual growth of population, we will have to do a little more calculation. We just need to add and subtract the migrants. The formula is birth minus death plus in migration minus out migration. So we add the ones who moved into the new place and we subtract the one who left the place. There is another term called positive growth of population which means when birth rate is more than death rate between two points of time. And then there is another term which is the opposite of this, negative growth of population, where the birth rate falls below the death rate or people migrate or move to other countries, simply meaning population is decreasing. There is a big question, now why people migrate or move from one place to another? It's called the push and pull factor. The push factor means sending people away because of reasons like unemployment, poor living conditions, political turmoil, unpleasant climate, natural disasters, epidemics and socio-economic backwardness. And on the other hand, pull factor makes the destination more attractive for reasons like better job opportunities and living conditions, peace and stability, security of life and property and pleasant climate. So roughly remember these reasons. Now we are going to see some trends in population growth. Currently the population of world is over 7 billion. What is more interesting is, it is only during the last few hundred years that population has increased at an alarming rate. So if you look at this picture, after the 18th century, population growth took a massive jump. And if you see the reason, most of the developments like industrial revolution, transportation, medical advancement, biotechnology, information technology, computers, they were all in full swing. And due to this, life expectancy increased standard of living improved, mortality rate decreased, and due to this, 
world population exploded after the 18th century. Now what are the impact of population change? Well, a small increase in population is needed in a growing economy because that's how the working force or the productive lot of a nation will develop, who will work or create jobs, generate revenue and that's how nation's economy will increase. A small increase of population is good. However, if it increases beyond a level, that will lead to problems because the natural resources are limited and allocating them among the population will be difficult and that can lead to problems like inflation, price rise, poverty, basically economic imbalance at an extreme level that can lead to anarchy where there is absence of any controlling system, law or authority. And the next topic is demographic transition. Basically what it means is how a particular place or a country has moved ahead in time from being a rural agricultural society to urban industrial literate society. This transition or change is known as demographic cycle. It's classified in three stages for better understanding. In the first stage, we are talking about 200 years ago, that is pre-industrial society. At that time, people only engaged in agricultural activities. Life expectancy was very low. Most people were illiterates and there was very minimal technology. However, human fertility was high, meaning people produced healthy babies. As people slowly moved to second stage, life expectancy increased a little bit because there were improvements in sanitation and health conditions that increased lifespan and reduced diseases. There were general improvement like access to technology, basic healthcare and education. Then in the last stage, birth rates fell due to various fertility factors such as access to contraception, increase in wages, urbanization, a reduction in subsistence agriculture, a reduction in values of children's work, an increase in parental investment in the education of children and other social changes. Population became urbanized, literate and has high technical knowledge. This shows that human beings are extremely flexible and are able to adjust their fertility. So these stages define the demographic transition theory. And the last topic of this chapter is population control measure. Some of the measures that are in use to help population control are family planning services, then availability of contraceptives, and government often use tax disincentives, meaning they impose extra taxes or fees to control and prevent desirable or undesirable actions, behaviors, or decisions. I'll give you an example. Singapore government imposes disincentives like limitation of income tax relief to first three children. Then paid maternity leave is allowed to only first two pregnancies and the cost of giving birth to a third child would increase. Singapore also gives children from smaller families priority in school admission. So you see how there are measures and systems in place to control the population. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. Don't forget to check out the links to the articles that were suggested during the course of this video. All the links are below in the description. This idea was suggested by one of the subscribers in the comment section. And I need more of your good tips and tricks to improve the content. So if you can, please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you enjoy these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.